I want to talk a little bit about something that's maybe a bit more current. So, we all know that the police aren't in the best favor right now, <laughs> obviously. Um, oh, goodness me. No, no, they're not, for, <laughs> for obvious reasons. I found a study um, uh, on the NYPD. So, uh, <laughs> the NYPD, in about 2014, 2015, they went on, they went on strike. Um, I won't get into quite why. There was a whole lot of stuff that led up to it. But anyway, they went on strike. And um, these scientists then sort of analyzed the data of, um, of major crime reports. So the number of people that were calling in to report major crimes, um, sort of like uh, burglary, felony assault, grand larceny, those sort of things. Um, and apparently those calls in went down um, as active policing eased off. So... What this study kind of suggests is potentially that active policing, people like police, be, police being on the streets, on the beat, um, isn't necessarily as helpful for a functioning society as maybe replacing them with other with other services, which is a big thing that's happening right now. You know, the whole defund the police, and yeah, the <laughs> there is a potential the sci scientific backing for it. What what is a good solution to that? Is it because I've heard a lot about community policing, community policing recently? Well, do you know much about that? Because I I'm completely unaware of what that so, is. So this is this is mostly sort of my opinion and what from what I've read. But it uh, and also there have been some studies on it as well. But if you think about the jobs that the police do, um, they can mostly be replaced by other people. So you've got like traffic offences, just have people that that pay attention to cars you've already got the sort of um the sort of like uh the traffic you've got traffic wardens and stuff just extend their role to being that yeah. if someone is having uh perhaps a mental breakdown don't send people with guns maybe send a doctor <laughs> you know yeah. um there's all of these jobs that the police end up doing can just be replaced by people that aren't police and when it comes to you know sort of because realistically when it become when it comes to crimes um if your if your house is being robbed, you you call the police. It's not like they show up and stop the robber. Your house is being robbed. The police show up later and then they're like, "Okay, uh, what happened? Well, I guess we'll find this guy. I guess we'll try and find him. Yeah. And if we can't, I uh, okay, bye. That's it. Like <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just a bit like how long do they have to train? Because they're not actually qualified for every job that they have to do. Less than hairdressers. Sure. Yeah, surely you should get people yeah, that are actually hairdressers qualified. Like two two, hairdressers yes. are two years. Police are like six months or six weeks. So I yeah. So I looked this up, and in the US and in the UK, uh, to become a qualified hairdresser, it takes more time and more training than it takes to become a qualified police officer. Um, which is, I mean, yeah, I want to have a good haircut, but I'd rather have a nice, healthy, yeah, functioning yeah, society. They've only got that hair. scissors. They've not got like guns <laughs> and mace and surely and military equipment. Surely yeah. you I want to see a haircut more... done with guns. Yeah. <laughs> You with the comb, they're like, you, you pull up a piece of hair, right? You pull it up like this. You, sh you just shoot them individually. That's a quarantine haircut for you. <laughs> One of these posts that was talking about defunding the police, though, was going through, and it was like, I, by the way, I do support this on the, on the whole. I think um, a much more um, well-balanced view towards creating a peaceful society is needed, that, and a lo more long-term view. Because obviously, like, if someone's robbing your house, it's a very scary experience. You want someone strong to come and help you. Um, and But you, the, the, the point is that you have to address, well, why is somebody robbing your house? Not just the fact that they are. Why is there inequality? Why do people feel that there is no easy way for them to feed themselves and their families, and the easiest way is to go and steal stuff? If they were given a good and easier opportunity to make um, a living, uh, and that felt accessible to them and they had the training and the skills to do so, they'd be more likely to do that, less likely to commit crime. However, I saw this amazing Instagram post that was going through all the ways you replace um, police with different things. And it said, and for example, somebody's trying to steal your car, you quickly call for your neighbours who are all trained in martial arts. <laughs> I want to live in a world where all my neighbours the ninjas and they all help me when i'm getting that would help. i've what i've hell, come up it? with another solution for the someone is stealing your car right so what happens when when someone steals your car the police try and find the car if they can't find the car then you're left with no car you've got to go, got to go through insurance but if you take the money out of the police you still got a bunch of police cars so when someone steals your car you simply get a police car to replace it <laughs> <laughs> My solution was just putting someone in the car so that when it's stolen, <laughs> they can tell you where it's gone. <laughs> I mean, that's just a self-driving self-driving cars will do that, won't they? Yeah. They, they get stolen. They're like, they send you a GPS. Like, like, I'm here. Come pick me up, please. I don't like this person. But yeah, no, I think 
addressing addressing the the reasons for for crime because people aren't inherently criminals i think i think that crime generally comes from um i think <laughs> well i think i don't know i've not spoken to every well, person I mean, Corey has a point there there are there are um well it's not that anyone anyone specifically is inherently a criminal but it is a possible evolutionary tactic to just go right screw everyone else i'll just steal stuff like it's an, it's an evolutionary ta- tactic it's not necessarily that anyone has yeah it, but kids it do could that. exist well, yeah. it, like Dawkins' book, The Selfish Gene, um, talks about how, and you know, Dawkins is not always the most um, intelligent person when it comes to uh, <laughs> how he chooses his words. Um, but um, he's, he came up with the whole idea of, um, like, he revolutionized the gene, the gene uh, science world and meme science. Um, and he talks about how you have to have a sta- stable evolutionary system where if you have everybody just be always benevolent and always giving all the time, all it takes is for one person to ev- evolve, one like um, gene line to evolve a selfish gene, which is not actually why, where selfish gene comes from, it's from a different part. But one gene line needs to evolve to be selfish and to exploit, and then suddenly the whole system falls apart because everyone's giving all the time and one person's taking all the time and just takes all the stuff. Yeah. So it's not it's not a, a stable system to just like. I mean, I would love it. It would be absolutely beautiful, <laughs> but it, it's it's very quickly open to exploitation if, if you're not vigilant. It's. I think. I think a key point about it is that it's not. There's no sort of homeostasis with it. There's no equilibrium, which is what Luke kind yeah. of touched on there. If you if you've got a society of takers, then your society is going to be very small. Actually, you can mm-hmm. find, you see this in, this is this is great, you see this in ants. So there oh, are, yeah. uh, you've got army ants, which are mega aggressive ants. They are the worst. If you are any other kind of ant and you come across a colony of army ants, your best bet is just to turn tail and run because the army ants will kill you and take all your stuff effectively. But different colonies of army ants tend not to really interact with each other. And that's because if they were aggressive towards other colonies of army ants, army ants would die out yeah so oh. the really aggressive army ants the, the sort of genes for being a super aggressive army ant have kind of just been kind of phased out to the point of yeah. like being really aggressive to other ant species but not being aggressive to themselves huh. yeah but th- that was that's kind of my story on the nypd defund the police you know black lives matter all of that i sound sarcastic i mean you're fully serious <laughs> <laughs> you know like uh, defund the police uh, black lives matter yeah, yeah you know you know that like, like kind of roof yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, that's kind of, that's yeah, kind of. Yeah. but i think that it's interesting when you um when you look at a sort of uh, meta analysis of it that the police don't the police don't seem to do a good job and when you look at the stats <laughs> the police still don't seem to do a very do a good job <laughs> <laughs> I think I think the key point about the the whole um, NYPD thing is that it really helps to use science to look at uh, to look at some social problems and find where the root cause actually is. Because if you look at the science, chucking everyone that mm. that that does something wrong in a big in a big jail doesn't <laughs> seem to fix it. Because because no. people that do more wrong still keep on happening. That that didn't make sense. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Basically, if you throw every, you can't just throw everyone that does something wrong in jail because people keep on being, you know. Well, yeah. If you, if you just punish and them and wrong. don't tell them how to change their behavior, they're not going to do any better. It's exactly. Like in countries where they base their prison system around rehabilitation, and there's like less chance of recommitting a crime. Recommitting a crime. You yeah. Know what I mean. Yeah. 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 <laughs> if you're if you're stealing from a house, it's probably not because you know. You just you just love stealing. I just love taking things. I love. <laughs> I just I love what you've done with the place. Can I have it? Like... I want it. <laughs> that, I think that's it for. Um, I think that's it for the NYPD, uh, both in this podcast and um, in general. They're disbanding. <laughs> bye bye. That's it. <laughs> NYPD is over. <laughs> Cancel. NYPD is over. Party. <laughs> Let's get it trending. <laughs> If you enjoyed that clip, head over to patreon.com forward slash SciGuys where you can find the full show. Or you can stay here and catch up on all SciGuys episodes. Or you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at SciGuysPod. Find out when we're doing more live shows. <laughs>